So we'll start with electrophiles, and these are sensibly electron-poor species that are therefore electron-loving. So they're attracted to a negative charge or an area of increased electron density. Uh, and the way they participate in bond formation is by accepting a pair of electrons. The three important types of electrophiles are, firstly, these positively charged species here. These are the most reactive of the electrophiles that readily accept electrons. And um, predominantly we're talking here about protons, but as we'll see in a bit, there are other types of electrophile of this nature. Uh, the other really important electrophile is uh, molecules of this type where we've got a carbon that has a group that's both electronegative and uh, a good leaving group. And these are electrophilic at this electron poor carbon here. So again, you can get a nucleophile adding in here and kicking out the leaving group. And then the third most important type of electrophile are uh, the carbonyl compounds. And these carbonyls react uh, at this carbon here attached to the oxygen. And that's because this carbon is electron poor because the electronegative oxygen atom is polarizing this bond. And you've also got mobile pi electrons here. So what you tend to get is nucleophiles adding into this carbon and pushing the electrons up onto the oxygen. So we'll start with these positively charged electrophiles. So the E plus is a generic representation of these electrophiles. So E can be anything bearing a positive charge that is uh, going to react with a nucleophile. And these tend to be the strongest type of electrophile that can even react with really weak nucleophiles. And as I've said before, the most common electrophile of this type that we come across is the proton. The other really important type of electrophile of this type that we see is what's called a carbocation. And this is literally a species in which you have a carbon that is positively charged. And these carbocations tend to form on compounds that can stabilize this positive charge here. So we either see carbocations forming on, say, a tertiary carbon, which benefits from the three inductive effects from these alkyl substituents, or we see a positive charge forming on an allyl group here. And the reason this is so stable is because it's stabilized by resonance, because this positive charge is conjugated to this double bond. So this double bond can move to neutralize this positive charge, which in turn takes the electrons away from this carbon here to generate this positive charge here. The more resonance forms you've got for a species and the more you can spread a charge out, the more stable it will be. So the way these carbocations work is that you tend to get heterolytic bond cleavage here to generate the carbocation. And these are really reactive species. So these will react with even weak nucleophiles, say, for instance, an alcohol here. So this alcohol is capable of being nucleophilic via this lone pair of electrons here, which add to this positive charge to form this new carbon oxygen bond here. These weak nucleophiles tend to have a proton attached. So after they've done this bond forming step here, there's a positive charge on the atom that bears the lone pair of electrons, so to neutralize that we lose the proton and get our neutral product here. And just to show how an allyl carbocation is formed and then how it reacts, we could start with something like allyl bromide here, and again we get our heterolytic bond cleavage, we get this relatively stable carbocation, but that's only relatively speaking, this is still a reactive species. And again, this can react with a weak nucleophile like water, for instance, to form this new carbon oxygen bond. And we then lose the proton to neutralize this positive charge here, and we have our neutral product here. We then move on to look at electrophiles of this nature here, where you've got a carbon that has an electronegative atom attached that is also a good leaving group, where X is chlorine, bromine, or iodine. And what you've got here is you've got a quite a polar bond. And you've got a group here that can leave the molecule. So what you tend to get is nucleophiles adding to this electron-poor carbon here and kicking X out of the molecule. So if we look at that in action, if we have just a standard primary alkyl halide here, for instance, where X can be any of these, these aren't particularly reactive electrophiles. So you'd need a fairly strong nucleophile to react with it. And the way the reaction occurs is you get this bond formation between the nucleophile and this carbon. And then to make way for that new bond, the carbon-halogen bond then breaks to give you your substitution product here and of course the halogen leaves as a halide anion and this is quite a stable anion because it's got a noble gas electron configuration and then we move on to the final type of electrophile that's really important for you and that is carbonyl electrophiles there's three important types of carbonyl electrophile there's the ketones and aldehydes where R is either an alkyl group or a hydrogen and these types of carbonyl compounds have no leaving group attached to this carbonyl carbon here. So these only undergo addition reactions. Second, really, and probably the most important type of 
carbonyl compound for you is what we'd call a carboxylic acid derivative where we have a group here X that can actually be a good leaving group so X is equal to a leaving group and these are capable of undergoing nucleophilic acyl substitution reactions and then the final important type of carbonyl shown here is an alpha beta unsaturated carbonyl compound where you have a double bond conjugated to the carbonyl double bond and these are really interesting because there's two electrophilic centers in this molecule you can either get standard nucleophilic addition to the carbonyl carbon or you can get nucleophilic addition to this carbon here because because this double bond's conjugated to this carbonyl group then this carbon here can also fill the pull of this electronegative oxygen which makes it itself electron poor and therefore electrophilic the important electrophiles that we've seen are the positively charged species, which are strong electrophiles, alkyl halides, or molecules of the type Rx, which are quite mild, and carbonyls, which themselves are also quite mild.